Hello and welcome to Woodbridge, the best town around. My name is John McCormick. I'm the mayor of this town. And we're here today with Bob Hubner, the director of the Woodbridge Police Department, Deputy Director Joe Niski. It's National Night Out, our third annual National Night Out here at the Woodbridge Community Center. And let me start with you, Bob. Tell me about National Night Out, how we started to get involved in it. I guess this is 23, so back in 21. Yeah, so National Night Out is a national initiative across the country, uh, always the first Tuesday of August. Uh, a number of police departments that I know of throughout Middlesex County are having National Night Out. It gives us, the police department, a great opportunity to interact with uh, our residents. Uh, Joe, tell me about what people in the police department, we'll start with Mike Harrison and Lenny Z um, uh, Mark Zeno, who of course are the community affairs officers. They're kind of spearheading the charge here. Right. Uh, our community policing uh, unit is uh, Detective Mark Zeno and Officer Mike Harris. And National Night Out is one of their many community policing projects. Um, and uh, their, their supervisor's Captain Nesty. He's very involved in this event, and uh, they go throughout the department and get most of our officers to volunteer to be here the entire night or at least part of the night. And I think it's interesting, same thing happened last year. We happen to have a police recruit class. And in this case, there's nine people that we just met yesterday morning, right. and they're all out here, you know, volunteering essentially. Uh, no one knows their police officers yet because they're only wearing, you know, shirts. Uh, but it's cool having them out here. Yeah, it gives them an opportunity. It's funny because they just started on Monday, and here we are tonight with them, and um, they're uh, they're already involved with our community and with the police department. And tell me about the people. I, I saw Donna Giacco. Who else in the administration that's not a police officer is involved in this? Yeah, so we have our brand new uh, mobile health services right. unit here. Uh, we invite the uh, fire districts to participate so the community can interact with our uh, volunteer and career staff. We have our first aid squads here. We have four first aid squads. The police department oversees the first aid squad, so so they, they're here. CERT is here. Uh, and it's just uh, a lot of other departments uh, throughout the township come and, and they're, they're welcome to open up a table. And this thing starts at 6 and I got here about 5.30. There was already people all over the place and lines starting to build behind us already. Yeah, so the first year, you know, we had a fairly good turnout. Last year, it, it blew, blew up. It oh, blew, blew up. up. And we expect the same this year. And, you know, obviously you, your administration has really helped us keep this going and grow every year. Yep. We're very happy about it. We're happy to show off the best police department in the entire state of New Jersey. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll be right back with the community affairs officers, uh, Detective Mike Harris and Detective Mark Zeno. Okay, now I'm with the previously mentioned stars of the show. To my left, Detective Mark Zeno. To my right, Officer Mike Harris. And I just called you Detective Mike Harris by mistake, but I'll take, take the promotion if you can get it, man. So uh, why don't you start, Mark? Uh, third year, Woodbridge Township National Line Out, police forces all over the state, all over the country doing it tonight. What does it mean to Woodbridge Township? It's a big responsibility for Woodbridge Township. We look forward to bringing the community and the police together. Since we brought in Mike Harris, He's exploded with new ideas, new things. He's reinvented an old system. And we look forward to Mike Harris boosting the community and the relations with the community and the police department. And so, you know, there's a, a in the country now, there's police relations are not at the highest and best point. So something like National Night Out might give kids a chance to see officers in a casual environment. And well, tell me what that means. Well, bridging the gap, that's the most important thing between the community and, and the young, not just the young people, but just the, the police department and the community itself. Um, you know, we, we, we do a lot of emphasis throughout the school year with the children, but now, you know, there's an opportunity to get the parents involved, to get their, their older, uh, you, you know, uh, generation involved as well. And it's really a great thing. And this wouldn't happen without you, to be honest with you. Well, it's this, easy. It's not, not one. It's a very without, difficult decision. Without, without your support and, and everything else and the support of the, not just you, but the community as well. I mean, look behind us, there's, there's 35 vendors that jumped at this. And, you know, that's that's what this is all about, is, put, is bringing the community together. And you know nothing happens. The mayor can't do much without the town council. 
And there's a whole lot of them floating around here tonight. We're going to get them on TV, too. We're very supportive of our town council who supports our police departments and all our efforts, especially our junior police academy and anything that the, pol the police department puts together, they're sure to support us. So give me an idea. You mentioned, I was going to mention junior police academy, senior police academy. Uh, you're on this uh, docket to be retired. Uh, very, very soon. I just want you to know I have not signed off on that yet. <laughs> and until I do, you cannot leave. Oh. So tell me, uh, either one of you, tell me more of what the, uh, what being a community affairs officer means. Well, in my time here that I've, I've been with the community affairs department, it means just that, having an uh, intimate affair with the community. As far as we come to, we deal with people not only in the schools, we go to their houses, is that we we're part of our community and we try to give back. So, Mike, when people ask me what's the toughest part of my job, one of the answers I give is neighbor-neighbor disputes. Mm -hmm. That is difficult. No one's breaking laws. They're just sometimes rude or obnoxious or not caring or not, you know, taking advantage of a, a bad situation. But you guys have a way to go in, you know, disarm people, get them to see common ground. Tell me what that's all about. Are you, did you training in that? Did, yeah, absolutely. You know, in the police academy, you get, you get trained on that and you're just trained patience. I mean, everybody preaches patience and at every level of education. And you, that, that's what it's all about is just compromise. You have to be patient you have to be willing to work together and because you have to live next door to each other. And right, that, that's, right. I mean, if you can't do that, then what are we, then what are we doing? Right. You know? So. Well, last question, be the one or both. Give me the names of some of the other people. We know all the police officers. Who, who, officers. who else in the administration of police is involved here? I saw Donna. Who else? Donna Janaco. She's sure. the one? She is number she, one, the rock star. Definitely, definitely. Donna's <laughs> the one. She's like the wizard. She, she yep. gets everything, puts everything together for us. Yep. Very good. Well, she also is instrumental in the Junior Police Academy. Again, she's the winner. Yeah. She, she's this the doesn't part. happen without Donna. Nothing does. Donna's well, I've got, I got a few Donnas in my help. I know what it means <laughs> just to have somebody you can count on to just do all the and, logistics. And yep. that's Donna. She, she, yep. makes, she makes sure everything works out. Coordinating the volunteers, coordinating the police, right? coordinating the vendors, it's, and booking things, getting food. Right. Food's got to be one of the biggest deals here. She right. does everything that we don't want to do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a lot of them. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, thanks, folks. Absolutely. Now you see, when I always say we have the best police department in the state of New Jersey, Mike Harris and Mark Zena are two of the reasons why. We'll be back. Okay, we're here now with three of our council people to my right. First Ward Councilwoman Sharon McAuliffe, who covers Woodbridge proper and Seawarn. To my left, no. Uh, you guys shifted. Let me, let me do that again. Okay, we're here now with three of our council people. To my right is Councilwoman at Large Lisbeth de Jesus. To my left, First Ward Councilwoman Sharon McAuliffe covering Woodbridge proper and C. Warner. To my far left, Brian Small covering at large like Lisbeth. And Brian is a former uh, Woodbridge Police uh, Department officer. Uh, National Night Out wasn't here when you were here, Brian, but. Give me your thoughts now that you're on the council of what this means, having been a former cop. Well, Mayor, it's so important for the uh, community to see police officers in a different light. You know, you're so used to them just driving around in the black, black and white cars, and you don't get to meet them and talk to them. And it's uh, just so important because they're just regular people, too. They got a job to do. Sometimes it isn't the easiest job to do. Sometimes you don't make people happy. But without law and order, you have nothing. And the police department does a fantastic job in this community. And Lizbeth, you know the cops from a lot of the different events you do, and particularly I'm thinking of the backpack drives where they come out to Caseby and other parts of town, and they're always there when you're there helping the kids that are more needy in Woodbridge Township. Tell me what your thoughts are about National Night Out. I think that this is a great event. I'm glad that it came to Woodbridge um, because it's another way for our community to interact, like Brian said, with our police officers and see them like, as people. They are people. They are someone's child, someone's spouse, someone's parent. Um, I love the fact that they're not only at my events, but they are at every event that Woodbridge has. You will see always a table with our Woodbridge Police Department community affairs officers there participating um, with our community, giving information, just forming relationship. It's all about having good relationships outside of work for people to know that they are people and that they understand and that they really care about our community. So I think that this is just 
another event where we can interact with our police department and see them as people rather than just a uniform that they wear. And Sharon, you've been a council person for just a short while, but before that you were a longtime business owner, so you kind of might look at the police department in a different light because they're there for you as a business owner and as a resident, of course. But tell me what you think. I think this is an amazing event. It's so nice to see everybody out here. They're out here showing us that they can do a lot more than just be out there driving around and patrolling Woodbridge to make our town safe. But as a business owner, it was always good if we ever had any issues. The police responded immediately and took care of it. But they also came in and were, were customers in my store when they were off duty. They are just like regular people in town and they're here to support us and take care of us in every way. So this is a great event. You get around, walk around, get to meet them and just uh, look and ask them questions like you would ask any other person. And Brian, as a former cop, uh, tell me the meaning of the Community Affairs Division, the fact that we have people dedicated just to that part of the cop's everyday life, just to have Community Affairs Division. What does that mean? <laughs> well, it's so important because uh, there's so many aspects of the police department, but just a unit that is just focused on community events. And like Lizbeth and Sharon both said, our officers are at all the events uh, with a table supporting uh, the community. So, you know, again, it's so important to have them. And this is a team. Both of you were at the graduation of the Junior Police Academy a couple of weeks ago. You see Mike Harris again. You see Mark Zeno again doing all these great things. Tell me what you think about that. I think the Junior Police Academy is one of the best programs that our police department offers because it gives it gives the youth in our township a chance and opportunity to interact with our police department and learn what they do. So it gives them a first-hand experience on what our police officers are exposed to every day. And I, you know, highly recommend it for anyone that's listening to, um, if they're looking for a summer program that they want their kids to interact, please sign them up for the Junior Police Academy. We also have the Senior Police Academy for people that are seniors in our department. So I am going to give that to Sharon. Hold on. Yep. Actually, the Senior Police Academy is amazing. My dad actually several years ago had the opportunity to do the Senior Police Academy, and he thought it was amazing. He went out there, he did things that the police do, exercises, and they took them out on a ride in the car. They got to, he got to see everything that a regular police officer does, and it was amazing because they get to see uh, on first hand exactly what our officers are doing on a regular basis. So if you're a senior, get out there and uh, get into the, the Senior Police Academy. You'll really have a great time and learn more about what our officers do for our town. All right, so your husband lowered the volume there. <laughs> what the heck's he thinking? He's right next to you and you're doing, he's the, for that folks, Angel De Jesus is the DJ and he was loud. He Doesn't just, he know he we're against loud country. music? <laughs> All right, well, thank you to Brian, Sharon, and Lizbeth. We'll be back, folks. Okay, I'm here now with the top two people who help us run the entire township of Whitbridge. One's office is in my office, Chief of Staff Carolyn Ehrlich. One's office is right next door to mine, Business Administrator Vita Simaluka, two longtime friends and two people very dedicated to the township of Woodbridge. Let me start with Vito. Uh, as the administrator, you've been working with uh, Bob and Joe in the police department and, of course, Mark and Mike uh, about the details. And you've come to the last two. This is our third. What do you think the National Light Out means to the community? Well, you know, the, one of the things is the police department is the first group besides sanitation and DPW that touches the community. They're some of the first folks that interact with them. This brings it a little bit more personal, where the kids can come out and spend some leisure time, do some fun games and art, different things like that, get some ice cream, and actually have a conversation with police on a whole different level. So it's a, it's a great time for them to interact together. Carol, you're a former council person. You didn't have this back in those days, but uh, you probably wish they did, because it would have been something that was right up your alley. Tell me about what your thoughts are. This is just phenomenal. And it just shows how very special our police force is because they're all about the community. And this gives them the opportunity to show it to people that we are part of the community and we're here to help, we're here to serve, and we want to even have fun with you. So, and I'll uh, bet not every town does this. No, no. 
Although it is a national program. It is national night out, but I'm yeah. sure. But we do it better than everybody else. <laughs> like we do everything, I hope. Right. So um, uh, tell me about, about uh, Bob and Joe and their leadership of the department. Two former career police officers running things now. They got the respect and admiration of the rank and file cops because they know they lived their life. So, you know, you said it all, Mayor. They came up through the ranks as patrolmen right up into the leadership in the police department and then came back as the director and deputy director. So they have been through all of those trials and tribulations as our officers are going through now. So they've gained that respect over their years of service to our community. And they're homegrown right here. Both both are, are, uh, are township guys, township kids that grew up and through the police department, through the ranks, and now they lead them. So that's where they gain that respect from. These officers know that their two lead uh, uh, director, two lead guys, uh, have lived everything they've lived through. And now, especially that, we just met the new recruits the other day, right, and right. I made the statement I'm gonna bring that, that yeah. just, just made the statement that those, uh, that those, they now have uh, a son and a daughter in the ranks of the police officers. So, so they, they know what they're going through, and, and they hear it at home too. And we meet the nine recruits yesterday morning in the muster room and out tonight. One's going to be in the dunk tank. They're all volunteering. This is usually the first kind of official duty they have, even though they're only their second day in a job. A great way to get them started, to really, this is Woodbridge, and this is what you're a part of. So it's very exciting, and they are all smiles. They're very happy to be here meeting as many people as they possibly can. This is a phenomenal recruit class. And you got... Uh, Last question is, uh, you go back when you were on the council to Mark Zeno uh, uh -huh. and Mike Harris is less. Maybe he started about 15 years ago. But these two guys, what they mean to the community, they are the Community Affairs Division. So right. what they mean to us is just un unbelievable. Go ahead. So, yes. Yeah, so whenever there is an issue with the community, we call them and they deal with it. Sometimes it's things that only they can deal with. When neighbors have problems with neighbors, it's very, very difficult, and they have a skill, a talent that finds a solution and makes people who were angry at each other start getting along. Uh, and people just know that you can reach out to our police department. As I said to the recruits yesterday, we're not just about law enforcement. We're about community and serving our residents. And that's, that is what makes us very, very special. There we go, folks. You see why we're so successful in Woodbridge. How can I go wrong when I got a chief of staff like Carol Ehrlich and a business administrator like Vito Simaluka by my side every day? They help make this the best town around. We'll be back. And now I'd like to introduce everybody to Eric Baumgartner, a very courageous employee of the Woodbridge Township Parks Department, which you probably might not know his name, but many of you certainly know the situation. Uh, six weeks or so ago, Eric was working, lining a field at Island Middle School. Uh, it started to rain. A lightning struck the ground, traveled through the ground, came up and hit Eric uh, through his feet. He was in pretty bad shape for a while there, but he persevered has worked incredibly hard, has an amazing support group led by his family, his wife Anita, his boys Cole and Adam. And I just want to say, man, how great it is to see you here. And um, you want to say anything to the community of Woodbridge? No, just thank you to all the residents, all the employees, everybody in the town for being so uh, gracious with uh, bringing food to my house and helping my family out, uh, the ramp in front of my house, just everything. The community has been outstanding. I can't be happier and I can't wait to get back on my feet and get going again. You go back to work soon, as soon as you possibly can? As soon as my feet allow me, Mayor. Tell me about your condition and, and um, what the prognosis is. Uh, so I have third degree burns on my left foot and then because um, it came up through the left leg and, and went down back down through the other leg and I have two little exit wounds there but I've been following up with St. Barnabas Hospital. They've been phenomenal. Uh, the burn doctors there are very good. Um, they said, you know, it's going month by month basis right now until I know, you know, until they know for sure uh, when I'm going to be able to get back on my feet. They 
They don't know about the skin graft yet, but, you know, they're saying it's healing very well. You sound great. You look great. And there's a lot of people that want to hear your story. I know when you're ready, uh, our our press guy, John Haggerty, is going to get all those different stations and newspaper reporters and radio reporters that want to hear from you. And and thank goodness you're you're okay, man, because uh, people love you. And thank God for R.J. McParland for saving me and the Woodbridge Police Department. They're just the best. That's what we're here for. <laughs> That's why it's great that you're here, because you're actually proof as to why they're the best police department in the state of New Jersey. You are living proof. Thank goodness you're living proof. All right, pal. See you soon, man. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. Eric Baumgartner from Sea Warren, uh, Woodbridge Hero. And Colin Adam, right, guys? Yep. Yep. They don't talk much. <laughs> I remember when I went over, they don't talk much.